Hi friends, I am Shravana and welcome back to my channel Sparkling Future. Before starting with today's topic, I request all of you to subscribe to my channel and also please like, share, comment and hit the bell icon for the latest video notifications. Thank you. Friends, in the previous video, we have seen how to read the semi-structured data using Spark with Scala. In this video, we will see how to perform the same kind of operations in PySpark. Friends, this is the sample file that we have seen how to uh, flatten this semi-structured file into normal flatten structure. So, if you see, this is basically a comma separated file which is like this is the first column, this is the second column and if you notice the third and fourth, it has two more columns like this. So, this scenario we will see how to perform this in Databricks Notepad. And if I just directly write it, this logs.csv, it will show only the two columns because we have only two columns in the first line. Because of that reason, what we have to do is we have to create a schema. For creating the schema, this is the syntax. First, we have to import types from PySpark.SQL and Create a my schema or any variable name that you want, you can give using the struct type and providing all the fields along with the data types and nullable to true or false based on your requirement. You have to create a schema like this. Once you have the schema, you pass that for reading a CSV file. So, in the initial position, if you can see in the initial uh, read spark.read.csv, we can actually directly do. I just copy pasted after uploading, so it is coming in this format. And for before even ha giving the format or CSV, you have to add this schema as my schema, which is I created in this above step. Once you do that, you can see now it is giving us four columns instead of two columns, it is giving the four columns. And we don't have price and view time in the first and fourth rows. So, here we can see null values are considered for that. So, friends, now what we have to do is first we have to flatten this timestamp. When you flatten that with space, so whenever you have semi structure or unstructured files, right, first analyze that to understand using which delimiter we can flatten that structure. So, if you see here, there is a space after each and every word or something. So, now if you see, this is the first one which is the date timestamp and then after a space we have web and after a space we have one hyphen and then space and then we have this event. So, first let's take this date timestamp. Here I am saying that first for this column which is the timestamp, you split it with space. After splitting, take the element at the first position. Once you split, it will become a list of elements by splitting based on the space. So, this it will become the first element. So, I, we need that uh, first element for date timestamp. So, I am giving one here and similarly, after the first split, this will become the second element in that list. So, I am consider I am giving the name as channel and from the timestamp, take the element at 2 after splitting with the space. So, the second will become the web or Android or whatever. This is the channel. And then, because here and here we have spaces, this will become the third value when you split with the space. But we don't need that. So, we will consider only the fourth one as event. So, if you see for the same command I am using, but I am changing the position as take the fourth one. And once we get it, we don't need this timestamp anymore. So, I am dropping it. And finally, when I do show, you can see here we have created multiple uh, columns like PID, price, view time, which are already there. So, now you can see new columns like date, timestamp, channel and event are created. And if you notice, date, timestamp and channel fields are fine. They, they both look fine. But for the other things like PID, there is this kind of data. PID equal to something or price equal to, view time equal to, event equal to is there. So, these four columns, we have to take only the uh, 
uh, what is that uh, content which is there after the equal to so for that reason first uh, we have a uh, like how we have done uh, we have used fold left in uh, scala right for performing some iterative operations similarly in pi spark we have reduce so we have to import reduce from func tools and create a list of columns that we have to do because we need only the four columns here i am taking that i am hard coding it here otherwise we can just take df dot columns it will give all the column names as list and now we have to apply reduce operation for these columns and we have to use this kind of op, uh, like a fetching operation we need only the right side equal to okay so now for that i am using reduce function which will reduce the operations for the given uh, uh, like it will perform the operations that we are sending inside this lambda function in the lambda function this is the new df which will be created after this operation and the column name column name here means usually in for loop we have i i we usually use i right for iterations similarly this is i i means for which one is for this column names calls is the list right in this list each element it will hold which means that for i if you say for each element in the list so consider this as i now we have to give what operation we need to perform using the reduce so new df dot with column and we have to send the column name when you say column name because i said to take this as i right so if first in it iteration it will take pid second iteration it will take price third iteration it will take view time fourth iteration it will take event and the same command we use here saying that for the column name first split it with equal to see this is the equal to right and then take the element at second position okay it's the continuation friends and reduce will take two more parameters the first uh, the first parameter is this lambda function with the operation that we need to do then second parameter is the call list list of columns third one is on which data frame we need to perform the operation so first one we are saying that perform the with column operations and on which column names we have to consider on which data frame that's those are the three th three input parameters you can send to reduce operation once you do that you can see the flattened data structure for all the columns that we require so friends why we are using reduce here is if we don't use reduce and still we need this means you have to write this with a column operation for each of these columns using multiple with columns like with column pid then again take this with column price take only the right side of this equal to and similarly for view time and similarly for event so instead of writing multiple with column statements we are using reduce and we are optimizing this query in this way okay so now you can see we have got whatever is required output flattened output that we were looking for okay thank you for watching the video friends please subscribe to my channel for more interesting learnings